Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. And this time we've got a bit of a, a mini review in a way and it's about the TC1, the um, multi-component tester. Now these things are all over eBay and the Chinese um, websites. I paid about £15 for this about, about 18 months ago but you can still get them for, for around that price and if, you, if you're happy to not be bothered about a case you can actually get them for, for less than that as well. I think I saw one for about eight pounds without a case but to be quite honest um, the case is actually very handy so yeah they're cheap um, but are they cheap and nasty or are they cheap and actually all right so what the question I'm really trying to ask here is um, uh, are they really any good or are you uh, wasting your time so let's uh, have a look on the bench we'll have a look at component identification we'll have a look at resistance capacitance and inductance and see if it does give meaningful results okay let's start by looking at component identification and one of the things that's I think really great about this little tester is um, such a good aid to have on your bench for, for just checking out um, components um, so a while back I bought a load of components second hand and there was a big bag of um, transistors and the only markings they had that were of any meaning were the, uh, just some little colour bands so I had no idea what they were there was four different types so the beauty about that is you can put it into the ZIF socket and press the button and it correctly identified it as a bipolar transistor MPN with a HFE or a beta if you like of about 170. Now I've got a multimeter that will measure um, the gain but it's um, a bit variable it gives you very different results every time so I've actually had this actual component uh, on the breadboard and measured the, um, the HFE in the correct way and done the maths and it does indeed come out at about 160 something like that the gain so yeah um, gives you a, a sensible result uh, some other components then also got three legs let's see what it makes of this one and that's correctly identified that transistor as an n-channel MOSFET um, quite nice it gives you the symbol it's also good as well that if you weren't sure about a component it tells you the pin number that drain gate and source are on so again that, that's quite nice particularly for a new, con new, new constructor and last but not least let's try something else with three legs and see what it makes of that yeah it's got that one too that's a n-channel JFET um, drain gate and source and the symbol is also correct so personally think that little ability to identify components like that is very very handy um, now it obviously does okay with with diodes so I thought let's give it a bit of a challenge now a long time back uh, the leads that came with it which were those little short uh, leads with the clips on um, they were quite um, flimsy so I attached two banana sockets to, to lines one and three so if I want to just test components with two legs I can just use any standard banana pl plug leads which I find I find that quite helpful so I've got a diode here um, I know it's a silicon diode so let's pop it in and see what it makes of a silicon diode and it's actually reckons it's two diodes now just not going mad there's definitely only one diode there you cannot see it terribly well but and that's because what we've got here is a Zener diode and as far as the test is concerned yeah got a forward voltage there as you'd expect with a silicon device of about 0.7 volts but the um, forward voltage of the second diode let it just display refresh again comes up as about four and a half volts and it is indeed supposed to be a a 4.7 volt Zener. Now some some Zener diodes are so small that it's difficult to actually see the markings even if they're on there so it's great to be able to have a device which will actually um, uh, tell you things like that so definitely gets full marks for its um, semiconductor identification. Next we'll have a look at resistance so I've got a pretty middle of the road in terms of value resistor there let's see what the the tester makes of it uh, so that's saying 119.1k 
So I reckon that's supposed to be 120k resistor, certainly well within its 10% tolerance. Let's just pop that onto the uh, LCR meter, make sure she's in auto mode. Yes, she is. So you're looking at this display and that's saying 119.3k, so that's within a couple of hundred ohms, so can't fault it in mid-range. Now let's let's give it a bit of a challenge. Let's give it this little beastie and see what it makes of that. So this, I'm actually, to give it a fair chance, I'm actually going to bend the leads on here and feed them into the two sockets so that there's no, um, no leads um, involved at all. It's straight into the ZIF socket. So hopefully you can see there. So that's saying resistor and it's saying 0.17 ohms. I'm just going to do that, make it cycle again, just see if it's going to agree. Yeah, resistor 0.17 ohms it's saying. So okay, it's clearly a very small resistor. Let's see what the LCR meter makes of that very small resistor. And the LCR meter here makes it um, about 0.101. And it is according to the markings, it was certainly purchased as a 0.10 ohm resistor. It's a current shunt for a, for a project actually. So yeah, considering um, that's done pretty well there to get that close with such a, an extreme value of resistor. At the other end of the scale, let's, let's try this one. Um, this is a much larger value, so we'll pop it into the ZIF socket again and we hit that button, well we hit the button until it actually cycles, not doing very well here am I? So that's saying no, I could just be, I suspect that might actually be the um, poor connections on the uh, on the lead, I've, not, I've pulled this resistor out of a little strip um, of resistors and I suspect there might be a bit of um, uh, there we go so it's saying resistor 8120 kilo ohm so 8.12 mega ohm 8.12 yeah okay let's see what the LCR meter makes of such a, a large value resistor 8.13 um, right well that's you don't very often get such high value resistors unless it's a, a project that involves vacuum tubes or valves. So yeah, at both ends of the range that seems to definitely work very very well indeed on resistance. Next up then is capacitance. I've got a 0.15 microfarad uh, polyester cap here which is sort of middle of the range I guess should be about yeah, 152 nanofarads that's telling me um, which is pretty good. Uh, let's see what the ESR meter makes of 152 nanofarads. 156, so yeah within 4 nanofarads, can't fault that, that was a, meant to be a little bit of mid of the range test. So next thing I'm going to do is really going to give it a challenge. I've got a, a 15 picofarad capacitor here which occasionally I use in, in radio projects, very small value indeed. Um, but we'll see what she, she makes of that. And it's saying no unknown or damaged parts. Now I've, I've cycled this a few times. It definitely does not recognise the existence of 15 picofarad capacitor. My next size up was 40 something. So what, I've, what I did as a bit of a tryout to find out where the, the sort of the lower threshold was, I've actually put two 15 picofarad capacitors there uh, in at the same time in parallel so that's hopefully going to show up something and that's now saying 26 picofarads for the, the combined capacitance of those two so it's certainly reading at that value so I'm just going to carefully feed these two 15 puff capacitors onto the LCR meter with getting the Kelvin clips to grab both at the same time isn't the easiest of jobs but okay so the LCR meter makes that 30 picofarads the uh, TC1 was saying about 26 so yeah considering that's such a small value uh, that's probably not too bad so it starts to work from I don't know 
20 25 picofarads and upwards um, so hopefully that's um, uh, a useful range right at the top end of the range um, I've got a 1500 microfarad capacitor here it's um, it's not new by any stretch of the imagination it's it's quite a few years old although it is um, never been used so I suppose it's what they would call new old stock these days so we'll pop that in and see what um, she makes of that so it's saying 1937 microfarads with an ESR of 0.2 ohms 1937 okay let's pop that onto the LCR meter but in electrolytic capacitor mode that would be helpful um, and that's saying about 1700 um, that's in millifarads but I'm just moving the decimal point and I'm um, at 2 kilohertz there that's probably where I get the most um, sensible sort of measure so on such a large value capacitor again um, not too bad at all and finally inductance I've got a fairly small value um, ferrite cord variable inductor here so we'll see what um, the tester makes of that and it's saying 0 0.06 millihenries, 0 0.06 millihenries, 2.8 ohms. So that's about 60 microhenries, if you like, because I suspect the LCR meter is going to give us the result in microhenries. Um, let's just try and get that to a point where it's not shorting out. Um, put it onto inductance yep there you go 59.3 microhenries which is um, 0.059 millihenries if you want um, so yeah in terms of inductance for a small inductance that's um, that's pretty much bob on the TC one um, now I've got this um, little iron cord choke which I extracted from a uh, a dead circuit board it's those two connections not a transformer those two connections don't do anything and um, so it, it's a, a bit of an old-fashioned uh, smoothing choke if you like um, so let's pop that onto the test leads on the TC1 and see what um, what she makes of uh, an inductance if she'll fire up for me there we go 2.65 millihenries let's just do that again yeah 2.64 millihenries okay let's get that on the LCR meter again I suspect you're going to get the answer in microhenries on here so it was oh no it's going to it's going to give me the answer in millihenries there you go it was 2.64 2.71 yep I reckon that's pretty good so once again um, I think the TC1's a, a winner for inductance as well which is always a, a, a difficult thing to measure I feel okay well that's um, just about it for my little look at the uh, TC1 multifunction tester and I know what I think I think for 15 pounds it's um, it's worth the money um, it it's reasonably accurate you know you've got to bear in mind that you've got a very inexpensive item here and um, what I really like about it is if you're building something and you can't remember the pinouts of a transistor or you just want to double check you can drop the transistor in press the button and it will tell you straight away which leg is rich and I've certainly used that when I've been um, uh, constructing things that's probably saved me a transistor or two on occasions so yeah I think that's pretty good I'd thoroughly recommend them um, and I think it was 15 pounds well spent so the TC1 multi-tester thanks very much for watching hope you found it useful if you have you could pl please click the thumbs up that'd be great um, be great if you could consider subscribing if you haven't already and let other people know about the channel that would help me and we'll see you on the next video